It should be locking on to, like, actual units, I think, over static defense, but whatever, you know. I guess uh, I'll have to maybe mess around with this, like, when I do an attack, like, when I do an attack like that, maybe disable, disable the lock on Lake Korowa, suggested, and then manually do it for the attack and then put it back on afterwards. I played a uh, one star port that last game. I, I played a no viking style and I almost died because of it. I got so I got so lucky um, because I didn't have Thors in my army. I, I just had tank mine Helen. He had a liber he brought a liberator with his bolt with his well not bolt with, he had a very bad army comp. Like his army comp was like literally just Thors against tanks, which is bad. But, since I didn't have a Thor in my own army to try to siege a Liberator, and luck luckily I, ha I had two mines in that I got in range of the Liberator that killed the Liberator, and that just shut down his attack. His entire attack got stopped in his tracks because those two mines that I sieged underneath the, his, uh, his Liberator... Because if I if I hadn't killed that, then he, then he gets to he gets to force more unsieges of my army, which again shouldn't have happened in the first place. I'm, guys, I'm gonna do my best to win this game and make this game a YouTube video. I'm gonna do my best to play the cleanest game I can here. I'm gonna do my very best. We're gonna play uh, Cyclone Banshee style TVZ. We're doing the old patch style and the new patch. And I've already tested it a little bit, so I do know that it actually works. It does actually still work on this patch, surprisingly. Here's a question for you guys. Here's here's a question for you for you guys in the chat. Would you date the Liberator pilot, or would you date the Banshee pilot? No one's ever asked that question before, have they? Make your choice. Well, if you're a guy, obviously. <laughs> You date Kerrigan. <laughs> uh oh. Ready. Like I said, I'm gonna try and play the uh, the Banshee style this game. That's the plan. I might be all in. Oh, he's actually all in me. We are indeed being all in, I believe. Yeah, he has no drones. You date a siege tank? Kappa Pride?
All right, so the whole idea behind this opener, by the way, to let you guys know is you open with Banshees for map control. Additional supply depots required. You'll, you'll see in a moment. He might actually be going mute. He might be faking Rocholin into Mutas. But the idea is we, um, we use the Banshees to deny Rocholins. And then we continue on. As we are. And we're 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 gonna keep continuing bench production here. Obviously. Not enough minerals. Got a target in mind. So we want to kill these as they're crossing the map. Hundred gas, minus hundred for him. Minus two hundred gas. So we're gonna go into like three star port and then eventually into seven factory at, at a certain point here. And we do actually want to get one siege tank. You see how he can't cross the map? Like. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to spam missile turrets everywhere. And that's because I'm looking at his army. And we can see that he has a lot of... There, there's a lot of um, gas that's missing from this guy's army, guys. We might even just... The nice thing about this strat is you, you can swap out of it. But I'm, I'm actually going to start building siege tanks now because of what he has shown. Oh, and we do have to keep map control with the Banshees. Keep clearing creep. And you just micro the banshees on the map. Actually, I think we're fine. Like, I'll do this just like I said. I can make this into a YouTube video. But we're going to keep making... Um, we're, we're just going to go heavy cyclone bench. Oh, he has hydras. So, at this point, actually, for real, you actually want tanks. <laughs> you actually do want siege tanks against this. I'm just picking off what I can here. Oh, he, he doesn't even have that many Hydras. So, the beauty of this is, now the Banshees are going to clean up everything. And, the, and then we're going to kite his army, and he's between a rock and a hard place. So, like, look at this. So he gets his army just completely decimated because he, he doesn't have the answer for both uh, for both sets of units here. That's the beauty of this strategy. Although, as you can see, he does have a ton of hybrids now. So th this is where, like, I'm going to cancel every... I, this is 8 billion IQ play here for me. I just canceled all, everything that I had queued up. And now we build... 
um, what's it called? Now we build um, mass tank heli. Like we go into uh, we. You can transition out of the uh, what's it called? Out of the cyclone banshee style into actual into traditional mech play, and you can just use the banshees to harass. We're just we're just gonna hit his army there for a moment to bait him a little bit. We we the banshees now we're using for map control scan for position of his army. And he he's pretty screwed. If we can pick off the overseers, then maybe we could um just keep in track of his army. Banshees are controlling his expansions. And he's pretty dead. We brought back the other banshees. We just have to do everything here because we can. Not the not the cleanest micro from me, but it gets the job done. We're we're fine. And yeah, you can you can just go into Thor Liberator. I could make psych. I have like so many options here now. I should actually be building Thor. The only unit I should be building is actually Thor's at this point. I can even go back into Banshees to be honest. Which I'm still building Banshees. It looks like he put all his gas in pure ground now, so. We can just. We're, we're building. We're almost playing this like a, a, he just wants to base trade. Oh. Every player on NA, when they're losing, they. Immediately default to base trading. This is like, this is literally the the NA motto is I'm losing the game. I'm going to base trade you. So just keep track of their army. Don't let them base trade you. Don't. I'm, I I refuse to let this guy base trade. He's gonna have to go into my army here, and that's gonna be it. He doesn't even have enough to hold off the banshees. And now we just build Thor's, and our comp, like, he's dead. I could probably just A move without even you. The banshees have messed up his composition so much at this point. He, he's pretty dead. We're gonna target the back line. And that's game. GG. Boom! And that is how you do it. I will upload this one to YouTube, guys. So for those of you here in stream chat right now, that is how you play. Let me just do a quick game review, guys. I'm going to post this one to YouTube as its own VOD as well. So for people that want to learn how to play Cyclone Banshee uh, Mech, this is the same... This is... Pretty much the same Cyclone Banshee Hellion uh, from last patch. Pretty, pretty, pretty much the same. You can go at you. You obviously, I mean, obviously, I opened Triple CC uh, Reactor Factory Starport into into, and then I went two Starports Reactor Factory, and then I add, you need to add on the factories, obviously. Basically, the production setup you want to end up with, guys, is five factory. Three star ports, all with tech labs. Two react, two reactor factories, three tech lab factories. That's what you want to. Uh, that's what you want to end up with because it's the most flexible mech production. And uh, then you just make Cyclone Hellion for, for Hellions four at a time. And uh, you 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 could even probably go quadruple, like triple reactor, double tech lab if you want to, because on this patch, obviously. You can react route cyclones, whereas the last patch you couldn't react. You had you had to have tech labs for the cyclones, so it was a little a little bit different last patch. But same thing. So you make basically the idea is you, you build banshees three at a time, 
and you're building cyclones four to five at a time with Hellions from your factories. And uh, obviously the two port opener, you should shut down. Banch the, the Banshees and the initial cyclones you build will shut down any Roach based all in as long as you scout really well and you're careful at the start of the game. The Banshees also, you need to be active and keep them alive to clear creep. I kid you not, guys, the most important part of this style is keeping the Banshees alive. Keep your initial Banshees alive because this is what they do. They allow you to shut down any type of uh, Roach-based play. So the opponent, he either has to have... You're forcing him to build Corruptors or Mutas most, uh, to accompany his army. And once your opponent has to do that, that means that's less money in his ground army. So if he had gone Corruptors, he wouldn't have this many Roaches in the first place. And that's the whole point of this uh, strategy and this style is... You are messing with the Zerg player's uh, unit composition. You're go like, every time you engage, you're picking off his units with the Banshees and the Cyclones and the Hellions, and then he's rebuilding, and then you're keeping track of what he's building. I mean, that's pretty much how you play mech, regardless of what they're doing. But again, you notice, I have the most important thing. Keep your Banshees alive. Do not throw them away. Do not throw the Banshees away. You need them for map control. You need them to kite the guy's army. You... The, the Banshees are the key to this type of mech style because the Banshees are what allow you to control the opponent's unit composition. You see he has to do something to try and deal with the Banshees, but he, he didn't build enough Hydras. So again, right here, let's watch this fight real quick, guys. Look at look at this fight. You'll notice, I, I see that he doesn't have enough Hydras to deal with because I... And, and why does he... You might be wondering, guys, wow, why didn't this guy make more Hydras than this? Well, he didn't expect me to have triple starport banshee production because who does that? So this is not in the meta. So he misestimated, he misjudged the amount of anti air that he would need to deal with the banshees. So he just misjudged it. And, and so I immediately pounce on his hydras with the banshees. Kite back with the cyclones. The hellions die, how about die, that's fine. And again, I pounce on the Hydras, because once he has no anti -air, the rest of his army is forfeit. Like again, we're kiting. We have a couple tanks. I did build a couple... Once I saw he was building Hydras, I built a couple tanks. To kind of like be a, you know, the linchpin of this, so I can move back into them. And again, so now, he has no anti -air. He lost all of his anti -air. He has to run away no matter what. I mean, he was, he was going to lose his army no matter what. Production tab... Cyclones, three Banshees at a time, and I built, I, like I said during the game, I built tanks because I'm like, oh, okay, he's building Hydras, now we do actually need Siege Tanks in our army. You don't want to, like, you can stubbornly stay on Cyclones, you can stubbornly stay on Cyclones if you want, and that is one way, like, there's a lot of ways you can play this, guys. There's a lot, like, I could, after I got, after I had that huge uh, fight here, like that win, we can just stop Psycho production altogether. We can just go into traditional mech. We can go into Thor Liberator. I, d I think the best thing, honestly, to go into would be Thor Liberator. Or, or you can double down, and you can literally keep going. Like, even last patch, this was something that I did last patch occasionally. You can double down, and now that I've killed that, you can even go, okay, I'm going to go... I'm going to keep making Banshees and keep making a bajillion Cyclones and you can try and overwhelm them. Like, that's another option you have. But, of course, there are downsides. There's upside, you know, there's upsides and downsides to both options and it depends on what the opponent is doing as well. If the opponent is staying on an army like this, you, I, I think it's better to start massing Tank, tank Thor Liberator going to, like, traditional mech. But if he, if the opponent, it, let's say he let's say he uh, cut, let's say he started to try to go air or something, I think Thor Liberator is better. It's just you have a lot more staying power with the uh, you know Thor Liberator's late game style. Cyclone, you kind of have to keep attacking and trading. So yeah, there you go, guys. I'm gonna post this vod on YouTube. Fight milk. You're going to be in the VOD, and I'm going to tell you to shut the hell up, too. You better comment in the VOD, buddy. I know you're here on stream right now, but this is going to be a, a nice little YouTube VOD. little little uh, Banshee Cyclone tutorial on the new patch for anybody that wants to 
play this style. So, la yes, everybody say hello right now. Everybody say hello to the YouTube VOD because you guys in chat are going to be in the VOD. <laughs> Fight Milk says he's going to comment on the VOD too. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I need to... Uh, that, that's basically it. I mean, at this point, again, mech, mech is all about keeping track of the your opponent's unit, where they're spending their gas, and then countering their gas expenditure with your own gas expenditure. So if they're going to make pure ground, you can make pure ground. <laughs> but you have to always be... You know this many times during this game, I was meant, I, I was kept telling you guys, I'm like, okay, I need to start Thor's here because he might, it looks like he could switch to air, but obviously there was no air transition ever. He just kept making ground, and then that's game, so. Nice, easy peasy, Cyclone Banshee and a traditional mech game. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments of this VOD when it's posted. Peace out.